Tonight, on Live from the Theater Basement, an entertaining interview with cast members of Theatrikids' performance workshop of Sweeney Todd, opening live at Theatricos July 16th through the 18th. Hope to see you there. Calf Country Radio, 92.9 FM, Calf Country. Local Northern Arizona news and a chance to win prizes if you submit a birthday shout out. 92.9 Half country with today's best country. I'm your host, Angela Keith. Tonight's engaging interview is with cast members from Theatric Kids' upcoming performance workshop of Sweeney Todd. The interview will focus on the importance of educational theater and the preparations for the performance opening July 16th through the 18th live at Theatricos. Here on Live from the Theater Basement. Thanks, Angela. Yeah, I'm really excited to get to talk to some of these student actors and learn more about their creative process. Hello, everyone. So to j just to get started, um, I'd like to learn more about how your interest in theater started and how long you've been involved in theater. Well, um, just, I guess to start us off, I've, this is my ninth year doing theater with Theatricos. I did some theater when I was very young, maybe about seven years old, but it was when I was 10 for Willy Wonka that I started doing it. And I've been doing it since. Um, I don't know, I, at Theatricos, I'm sorry, at Theatricos, there's just a really good community. Um, I always feel supported by the other actors, the directors, and everybody else who works behind say, behind the scenes. And it's just a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to be a part of Sweeney Todd. Yeah, um, I've been doing uh, theater since the seventh grade. So what is that now? Like f six years, seven years? I'm not 100% sure. Um, I do theater mostly because Matthew, who is also on this call, um, <laughs> I was talking about it one day at school, and he was my best friend then. He's still my best friend now. Um, and so I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. And then I just fell in love with it and have been doing it ever since. Sorry, I've been um, I've done the this. Um, Go ahead, Matthew. Um, okay. Um, have, um, uh, my name is Matthew. I've, I've been doing um, uh, theater since uh, 2011. Uh, I, I grew up in a in a very uh, theater heavy family. Um, my uncle was um, doing kind of small theater like while I was uh, growing up and my mom had always done community theater um, and so in the process of uh, starting to discover community theater I had discovered theatricos and uh, found the community here and kind of uh, built my relationship with it. Um, yeah. I'll go now. Um, I started theater as like a camp, um, just kind of like something fun to do when I was little. And it, I stayed because of the community and the friends I've made and um, how fun it was to just be part of something so big and so important. Uh, I'm Spencer. Uh, I've been, uh, I started theater uh, it was a while, like uh, eight years ago or about. Um, I started because my sister uh, started it before me, a couple years before me, and she really liked it. And it was uh, the summer camp at Theatricos. So I started doing it and I just liked it. I liked the people. Uh, Joe Maniglia, the director, he uh, is really close. I'm really close to him now uh, ever since then. Yeah, it's been great. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's great. So with each of you being involved for so long, what are some things you have learned throughout theater that you feel can be applied towards your life um, outside of the theater world? Just that having um, this, this kind of community uh, is very important, uh, not only just on a, on a personal level, but for the community um, in general, having this type of outlet, um, I think can be uh, very healthy, um, uh, especially um, in times kind of like this, when, when, I, when I think people are kind of more retracted uh, from from society, um, this this gives kind of an outlet for people to uh, kind of introduce themselves to new people and newer experiences. Um, and theater is always uh, such an open and and vibrant uh, and accepting community, uh, just because of what it is. Um, that I I, I think um, I, th I think I've I've just I've I've just really learned the importance of of what uh, acting in theater can do for a community. Yeah, um, I think that theater in general is kind of an exercise in empathy. Uh, like the whole thing is empathizing with your own character, with the other characters even when they come from places that are very different from you. Uh, like the two characters that I'm playing in this show, uh, Sweeney Todd and Judge Turpin, do horrible things throughout the course of the show. But there are, in order to play them in a convincing way, I have to figure out ways to kind of find those points of empathy, even if I don't Obviously, I don't condone the things that Sweeney and Judge Turpin do in this show. They're horrible. But there are points where I can connect with them. And I think that that's important in just in general in life to find those empathy points, even with people who you aren't necessarily on the same page with all the time. And I think that that's something that theater is super helpful with. Anybody else? Um, you meet a oh, lot yeah, of that's... different people. Sorry. Oh, good. No, that's fine. Um, you meet a lot of different people in theater. Um, people who have, um, like, they're just completely themselves. And that has kind of taught me that, like, just embracing the things that are weird about me and that I can um, enjoy. And I think it's really shaped me into the person that I am today. And um, I've just become so open with myself and um, even just like the things that I wear, I can express myself through that or what I do with my like hobbies and stuff. I am not surprised by that, which I think is really hard um, at this age, but theater has definitely helped me with that. Great. So with this upcoming show in particular, how have each of you worked to find that empathy with your characters and prepare to perform as these people? Um, Sweeney, with Sweeney Todd um, is, is kind of a very, uh, a very nihilistic show. Uh, the, the, uh, kind of the point of it is showing um the uh if i'm trying to think of the words and it's not coming to my brain right now of course but um the the futility in 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 seeking revenge um but at the same time it doesn't paint a good um picture of society i <laughs> it's finding the empathy with the characters in this is kind of interesting especially in the time that we're in now um in such a uh, uh 
I'm sorry, I can't think of words tonight. Uh, I'm also sorry, I'm talking very quietly. I'm, I'm on the East Coast, I'm three hours ahead. Um, uh, when we're in such a, it's such a volatile time in such a very complicated and very, if frankly, scary time, uh, you know, looking through the world uh, in the eyes of these characters um, is 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 kind of I think it's kind of enlightening as as to um, how some can be pushed to feel uh, if that makes if that makes any sense I, I know that's kind of rambling. <laughs> Yeah, I think, especially for someone like Sweeney, Judge Turpin is kind of his own beast in this show. Uh, he's kind of, he's pretty awful. Um, but Sweeney, especially when we see him at the beginning of the show, and you start learning more about what has driven him to the place where he is of seeking revenge and this hatred that he feels and this anger, like this deep-seated anger that is uh, kind of consuming him. Um, it's easier with that to kind of see where he's coming from. I think that one of the things that Joe has said during rehearsals that I think is very accurate for this show is that someone like Sweeney Todd is something that I think we've all kind of like imagined doing. Like, this person wronged me, like horrifically like terribly wronged me altered the course of my life wronged me and there's a part of you that is like well i would love to get them back for that somehow um whether that's you know killing them and baking them into a pie or whether that's just i'd like to have what they did to me happen to them um and the show is kind of an exercise in looking at what happens when that kind of revenge takes over your life um and yeah um for my role specifically i've reached out or talked to a few people who i'm close with saying that i've had a lot of difficulty with this role because beetle bamford is a very just mean character um, but beginning to get into it, <clears throat> trying to find his motivations when, like, watching the 2007 movie and a few other resources, in my own opinion, like, uh, Beale Banford seems to be very sycophantile, I guess. So trying to find out, like, he's trying to get approval, I guess is the best word I can come up with, from the judge. So trying to come into that where it's like wanting somebody to see you as an equal or something similar to that is something that I personally can empathize with. And so trying to lean back into that motivation for this character. So my character, uh, Tobias, um, he comes from like an abusive master kind of where he is forced to uh, sell fraudulent products and uh, he's abused a lot until uh, Sweeney Todd kills him uh, and then he is taken in by uh, Sweeney Todd's love interest Mrs. Lovett um, where he thinks he's being cared for and loved for but really he's selling people as pies and Com helping commit these atrocities that he wanted nothing to do with. Um, but uh, he still cared for these people, uh, Mrs. Lovett, even after he knew, um, as he watched her die, he went insane. He, uh, he still cared for her, uh, even as she wronged him, um, which is very, like, um, he's very trustworthy, even though, uh, he's not very, uh, he's not very, like, doing the right thing in that, um, but, yeah. My character is talked about more than she is 
presented on stage, um, which is kind of hard to find the character between that, um, taking what other characters think of my character and what my character has presented herself and finding the middle line between that. Um, she's compared to like a bird trapped in a cage. Um, and because she's trapped, she doesn't know anything. She's very naive. And I think that plays a lot into her character. And so just channeling that like naiveness and that she craves freedom and um, she'll go crazy for it and all that kind of stuff um, has really helped me channel that character. Okay, yeah, thank you everyone for talking about the production and what you've been able to learn through theater so far. I think we are out of time, but yeah, it was great talking to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Mother Road Brewing Company, brewing distinguished beers and building community one pint at a time. Join the adventure. Mother Road Brewing, local, independent, Arizona. We would like to thank the Sweeney Todd cast members, Spencer, Robin, Dermot, Jasper, and Matthew for taking the time to sit down with McKinsey for this engaging interview. Live from the theater basement, producers Jamie Hasapis, Lynn Ducetera, engineer Matt Brewer, technicians today is Jaden Roberts, associate producers Virginia Brown, Ashley Larson, Joe Mendiglia, Michael Rulon. Our crew includes Sam Bradbury, Casey Garcia, Ava Haynes, Madison Hartson, Lene LeBurge, Justin Moscow, Marika Tenkumo, Dramaturgy, Theatrico's Artistic Committee, Play Curation, Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase, Executive Producer, Chris Varell. Live from the theater basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and available wherever you get your podcasts is a production of Theatrico's Theater Company in partnership with Northern Arizona Playwriting Showcase in Deuteron Films. Theatrico's Theater Company, Flagstaff, Arizona, is the theater company of Northern Arizona and Grand Canyon, embracing the spirit of Broadway with shows like the heartwarming musical Little Shop of Horrors. Maybe not so heartwarming, but Miracle on 34th Street, that's heartwarming. We are looking forward to Theatrico's reopening with Native Gar Gardens on July 24th, being performed live at the Arboretum and the Theatrico's stage. Tickets are available now. Live from the Theater Basement, the weekly podcast streaming show from Theatrico's Theater Company, alternates between 10-minute 10 short, 10 short plays and interviews with Arizona arts leaders. If you, as a listener or viewer, have input, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at theater at theatricos.com. Live from the Theater Basement, streaming live on Sunday evenings at 7.30 p.m. and available wherever you get your podcast is funded by... Flagstaff Arts Council, hashtag Create Flagstaff, and Arizona Community Foundation. Additional funding from Arizona Commission of the Arts, Flagstaff 365, BBB Revenue of the City of Flagstaff, Calf Country Radio, and patrons of the arts like you. Thanks for joining us at Live from the Theater Basement. This is Theatricos.